You boomers might remember a time when your town or city was forested in metal TV antennas, or you had rabbit ears on top of your TV. It was the only way to receive free TV at that time. Then along came cable TV. It promised endless channels for a reasonable price. And soon towns and cities were deforested of antennas. Today, the promises of cable and satellite TV are just too big of a monthly expense. People are looking for ways to cut the cord or lower their bill. One option, depending on how far you live from the TV transmitters, rabbit ears might suffice or an antenna back up on the roof. In my backwoods area, with this little piece of metal, I can get 20 digital TV channels for free. But before you go out and buy an antenna for your roof, you need to figure out how to mount it. In this video, we're gonna look at the Channel Master CM3080. It's a system designed for mounting an antenna mask on a chimney. The reason for doing this video is these are the instructions that come with this unit. For 20 bucks, you get a paragraph that tells you what to do. It, along with the poorly rendered pictures, made it impossible to assemble this without some trial and error. So I'm gonna save you some of that trouble by showing you the steps I took to assemble it. First off, the kit consists of two mounting brackets, two 12-foot straps, two strap buckles and associated parts, and two U-bolts that will eventually hold the mast. Tools that you'll need for this are 7 16th socket or wrench. Since you'll be working with metal that has sharp edges, you'll need some leather gloves or thick canvas gloves. I also wear latex gloves underneath it so that if I need some dexterity, I can still have some protection. You'll need some adjustable pliers, a hammer, and a screwdriver. Before attaching anything to your chimney, you need to determine if the chimney structure is sound enough to bear the weight load from wind and the antenna that you're gonna to attach to it. Look for cracks, loose brick, mortar that's falling out. If you see any of these, then perhaps you should have your chimney inspected. You also wanna look around the chimney area for power lines, because if you inadvertently touch one of those, it can kill you. I'd say if there are any power lines nearby, just hire a professional, let them do it. With this chimney, the structure is sound, there are no power lines, within a large radius of this, so we're safe to work on it. First thing we're gonna do is determine where the straps are gonna go, and we want them as high and as low as possible to spread the weight and forces that the straps will be bearing and transferring to the chimney. I leave the mounting brackets and the rolled up straps in the blister pack, and then I use a container, and I happen to have a bucket here that has everything else because these are the pieces that if they fall on your roof, they're probably gonna roll off and you're gonna lose them. So I like having them in some container to mitigate that. We grab one of the 12 foot rolls of strapping and start to unwind it. We're gonna grab a strap buckle and slide it on the end. Note that the strap buckle has two prongs that stick up. So you wanna make sure those are going in the correct direction. This is the incorrect direction. The prongs should be facing the closest end of the strap. Then we're gonna slide on one of our J-bolts and just let it hang. We fold the strap over the J-bolt, slide it underneath the strap buckle. Then we fold it back on itself and using a pair of pliers, we cinch it down. It should look something like this. And now we're gonna push down those prongs on both sides to keep the strap in place. When you're finished, it should look like this. If you have an assistant, they will hold the bracket in place. Then you will attach the eye bolt to one side of the bracket and then start going around the chimney. If you happen to be alone, and that's not advised, but that was my situation, I dropped that bracket into the bucket and that held it in place as I went around the chimney with the strap. Here's a view of our lower strap. As we come around, there is the excess. Now note that before you feed this strap through the second eye bolt, you're gonna slide on the strap buckle with the prongs pointing towards the short end. Wrap it around the J-bolt, come back, slide underneath itself, and then we're gonna pull this strap tight up against the chimney. 
you'll notice that the nuts attached to our eye bolts are barely on. These nuts will take up the remaining slack on the strap. Here's a close-up of our strap buckle going to the eye bolt. You can either let the excess strap hang or cut it off. Before tightening our nuts, we make sure that the strap is even all the way across so that it's on the same course of bricks all the way around. You don't want it caught in between the mortar. Using a socket or a wrench, we start tightening our nuts. When done, there should be no slack on the straps. And now we're ready for our second bracket. With an assistant, again, it'll be easy, but without one, you can either throw this bracket into the bucket like we did before, or attach it to the lower bracket so that it holds the strap in place as you go around. With the strap all the way around, you add your strap buckle and same procedure as the lower bracket. Make sure the strap buckle is facing the correct direction. When you're done, this is what it should look like. Top, bottom, excess strap has been cut or trimmed back. All our corners are on brick and not on mortar. Finally, you're ready to attach the U-bolt and the two nuts. This will hold your mass. Quick tip, you may want to attach your antenna to the mass before placing the mass into this mount. The reason being that once you get the mass into position and it's secured, now you're going to have to climb that additional height to get the antenna on top of that, and that could be really dangerous, so it's much easier to work with it attached. Although, you definitely will need a second person to help you with that weight because it's really easy to lose your balance, especially on a sloped roof, and you'll either damage yourself or the antenna or both. In the end, you should have something that looks like this that will support your antenna or antennas for years to come so that you can enjoy some free TV. If you found this interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and help keep commercials out of these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.